Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live Special number 204. I'd fund that beta 2, recorded June 14th, 2014. Hello and welcome to I'd Fund That, Twit's crowdfunding show. I'm Glenn Rubenstein and today we have four products that are midway through their Kickstarter campaigns and they'll be demoed for us by their creators. Now what makes the show interesting is that it isn't about millionaires seeking to invest, the only money at stake is yours. Throughout the show you'll be able to ask questions in the Twit chat room and we'll also be conducting polls to find out how you feel about each product. Uh, we also have a panel here in studio which includes Chief Twit Leo Laporte. Hello. Twit's Twit News Director Mike Elgin. And Twit CEO Lisa Kensel. Hey, everyone. You oh. should be intimidated at this point. Terrified. Yes. We're all smiling, so maybe we <laughs> should am. have mean looks. They'll ask questions, give advice, and ultimately tell them, I'd fund that or go fund yourself. So our first product today is Quirky Writer, and here to present is Brian Min. Oh, hello, Brian. Welcome. Hi. Uh, um, super awesome and excited to be here. Uh, this product is called a Quirky Writer. And uh, why, not, why not QWERTY oh. Writer? <laughs> Maybe that was uh, patented. I'm not quite sure. Okay. <laughs> Quirky Rider. I don't know. It kind of kind of flew. I, I get the idea. The, yeah. Yeah. So, so for people listening, it looks like a very, very flat, traditional, non-electric typewriter. Yeah. So the Quirky Rider uh, um, is a USB mechanical uh, vintage typewriter inspired uh, keyboard. And uh, I'm a game developer. And like a lot of people, we just spend all day typing. And uh, one day, uh, I have this like awesome monitor and these really cool speakers. And then the thing that I sort of touched, the keyboard that I was typing on was pretty bland. I was introduced to this thing called the mechanical keyboard a few years back. And, and when I started playing on this, it was, those mechanical keyboards were very expensive. But when I started typing on that, they had this super awesome clicky tactile feedback. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. And then it dawned on me, I wonder if there's a way to merge sort of this vintage typewriter style that I love uh, with this modern mechanical keyboard. And that's when sort of I got this idea for doing this. And I, I've been pretty obsessed with uh, building this typewriter for a while. Of course, I wanted to have a bit of a modern elements to it. And so the modern element being, of course, this is a mechanical keyboard. So it has these clicky switches to it, which is super, super fun. Um, and uh, also um, it has a uh, sort of a, a USB port. So you could you know, plug it into your computer or your desktop and type along kind of uh, in that. But uh, ultimately, the, 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 cool, the thing that's really cool about it is that it has a built-in uh, Bluetooth transmitter. So you can sort of, if you have a tablet or so, you can sort of like thread, you know, your tablet uh, via Bluetooth and you can sort of, uh, that goes, yep. Very cool, Brian. So this is actually on Kickstarter right now as the Quirky Writer. Yes. You, you've you got 19 days to go as of this recording. Yeah. You've ra you're have you looking for $90,000. You've raised $38,000. So yeah, yeah. you're not even halfway there. But you got plenty of time if we can convince our audience at home to buy this. I, I have a couple of questions for you. I'm sure you guys I do. I do, too. too. I want to know what the price is. I mean, first, oh, yes. what, are so, you, what are you looking to sell these for? So uh, right now we priced this at $289. Okay. Um, and uh, there's a number of reasons for that, but it, you know, it's just doing research. And of course, the biggest cost uh, for this is that I wanted to make sure that it was a mechanical keyboard. And uh, uh, apparently mechanical keyboards are very expensive. And so that was sort of the biggest cost, but that was something that I didn't want to uh, take away because otherwise it sort of lost the, you have the, sort of the look of the vintage typewriter, but I felt like it needed the switch to convince people that, well, this is kind of a modern interpretation, a resurgence of that switch that emulates that old typewriter. So I had to put that in there. And of course, the keycaps, which are uh, expensive, and so it raises the price. And so a lot of people uh, did question, say, well, wow, who's going to spend $300 on a keyboard? And so it is sort of a tough sell, but I think I tried to make sure that it really exudes a lot of quality and it feels like something that's sort of an heirloom and, and kind of that kind of thing. So well, you, uh, you yeah. have to price it so you can make money on it. Actually, I'm concerned that you priced it too low. Uh, you're obviously you're not going to take vintage typewriters, take them apart, and make that keyboard. No, no, no. You're going to have somebody design something. Have you? How much due diligence have you done on the actual cost of manufacturing? So one of the things that I've done was our schedule is is 
is longer than most Kickstarter hardware. You're Kickstarter. saying August of next year. For yeah, the and so a lot of times uh, when I look at some of the Kickstarters and when I do, did my due diligence, it's like there's no way that's going to ship in six months. And so I, I, I factored that in. Um, and also uh, just the fact that uh, uh, meeting with great uh, engineers that are out there that knows about Kickstarter and they inform me about hey these are the things that you need to do and these are the kind of things it will cost so like tooling will cost four to eight thousand dollars you know these keys cap will cast x miles so I was able to kind of like price things out in a way that I felt was pretty uh, pretty aggressive but at the same time very realis realistic. You feel confident that you can make this won't be plastic keys <laughs> that you're going to be able to make something that's pretty close to what I see here yeah for that price and still make a profit um yes i mean it'll basically just break even okay. uh is that's what of, it's going to cost you yeah it's going to just uh <clears throat> not including sort of the uh sort of elbow grease but and, uh, but wait a minute if you're only going to break even what's the point of doing it well i uh, i think the idea was that it'll break even but i'll have more units uh that i can cost goes down. The, yeah, yeah yeah at that point uh, i would be able to sell mm -hmm. at a profit to be able to uh, invest and you may in. put it in retail at 325 you may not may not be able to get it at 289 that's the kickstarter price right? yeah yeah i think uh and that was just really challenging in those numbers and i think maybe uh, again getting uh, I, I was able to try to get some business kind of uh, right. uh, sort of advice and uh, that was I, I wanted to make sure that the number made sense for our backers but at the same time there are definitely some unknowns so it is it is challenging but so it seems to me that you have two opposing goals here one of them is to have a high quality keyboard uh, which is why you're using the mechanical uh, keys you want to go back to the era where you know mechanical keyboards everybody seems to really think that those are the best kind they feel good they sound good they're you can type really fast on an old IBM, whatever they are, the, the old, you know, IBM keyboards yeah, that are mechanical. Yeah, exactly. Thing. And that's, so that's one goal in one direction. And in another go direction, you're trying to be decorative. You're trying to be, it's, it's a visual, it's essentially a, not a pun, but it's, it, it references a mechanical keyboard, an old fashioned mechanical keyboard, especially the big arm thing. <laughs> yeah. The and, chrome return. Yeah, I love that. Exactly. And, and I, I would, I would, by the way, I would, I would, recommend that the default behavior of that should be a return yeah, yeah i think you know? i think that makes and then sense. Pe let people uh, the modify only, it from there right but those are those are opposing mm. uh kind of approaches and i mean i would love personally to have somebody design a keyboard that's purely for the practical mm -hmm. performance of it sure, sure. but and that's not what this, this is decorative this right? is decorative which is but but it's also he's also trying to have it be higher performance so a lot of the cost is to take something that's primarily decorative and making it also high quality, and so that yeah. there, there you end up. For, there are cloak. Etsy artists who are taking traditional old Remingtons and right. reconditioning them. I'm seeing one here by a guy named Jack uh, Zilkin. It's eight hundred dollars. It's USB. You plug. You actually have room for the, and it's a full typewriter. Yeah, right. Eight hundred dollars. That's right. a converted old typewriter. That's, that that's completely scale. different than what we're and having here. And this does here. not scale. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, right. I could see. You know, I could see in the future that you could take this. This is a pretty. You're essentially referencing a very plain vanilla, I mean, 1900 era kind of mechanical mm -hmm. typewriter. But you can imagine some crazy like steampunk types yeah. and you know some really amazing things like that. Because again, this is all about decoration remember you're uh, talking to a guy here who spent over five right. grand on a steampunk laptop this would look amazing <laughs> right but yeah <laughs> that, look amazing so you're not office. maybe the person we should be talking to on that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no fact, i'd be more than happy to just i'm a little torn because personally i think this looks great i would love to have something like this it's a lot of fun i should point out because it's usb you probably could use it on a computer as well as on yes, a tablet you right can. yes yeah. I, absolutely that was sort of like the, actually the initial first thing i actually thought that this was a little bit too gimmicky uh and then just what i would well, just you, i think there's a market for it <laughs> thank you my biggest uh, concern is can is is can you really do it and and would we be funding something that while i like it and i think there's even a market not a huge one but enough of a market to make it a real product can you actually make it for two eighty? And can you support it? If I if I spend that much money on a keyboard and a, and one of the keys falls That's my off, problem. Sure, you sure. better fix it because it's yeah. like you know that that would really be a bummer. I couldn't use it anymore. Yeah, yeah. So, so we have some so questions from the chat. Mr. Oh, Mike boy. wants to know: Does it go ding? <laughs> it uh, better. <laughs> you can do that in that software. Was of, that was one of the stretch goals. <laughs> uh, we'll put, put, put in it. a built-in uh, speaker so that you could actually uh, I'll great. sample. That's I'll great. sample every uh, uh, typewriter, and then you can just say, well, I want a Remington, or I want an Underwood, and I guess That's you can awesome. do it, uh, maybe, uh, as a stretch goal. <laughs> uh, Jeff N. wants to know, how heavy is it, and is it really portable? Um, that was a question. It's it's going to be fairly heavy, because I think uh, if it, in, initially when it was like uh, two to one to two pounds, uh, the tablet would flip over. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and also, there seems to be a correlation between people feeling that it's quality versus when it's heavier. So right now, it's weighted at about four to five pounds, so it's quite heavy. Uh -huh. uh, and so, yeah, the portability is kind of an issue. Uh, but you're not really marketing this to be a portable thing. No, I don't think no. that's the case. That's right. why I thought there was a bit of like, when you put this uh, iPad, it's like, wait a minute, iPad is portable and this is not. And I think really it's just, this is a desktop unit for your computer and, it, you know, occasionally, uh, if you get really tired of that you know, square kind of plastic keyboard, you yep. want to bring this. It's kind of like a Sunday, you know. I, down. for one, am stunned that Microsoft Sorry. did not buy you and put <laughs> this on the Surface Pro 3. It seems like it's clicks. Really? It does no. everything. What? You know, it does perfect. Don't you remember our, what Steve Jobs said about Microsoft? They have no taste. No taste. Oh. If yeah. they had taste, they would have purchased Actually, this. Actually, it would support the uh, sur <laughs> sur uh, Surface Pro 2 is the thickest tablet in, on the market at 5 mm -hmm. inch. And this if will it's support in there. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. there you That's go. interesting. Although the new one, the three, I think is thinner. So yep. chat room, we want to know what you think. Go to twit.to slash quirky to either uh, vote I'd fund that or go fund yourself. Twit to quirky, yes. not QWERTY, Q-W-E-R-K-Y. We'll give them a little time to uh, vote. I think they're going to be casting the tiebreaker is what I think. It's possible. I'm not sure how, how this panel is going to vote. I, I just Can have, I go first? Before you do, I just have a, a couple of more questions that sure. occurred okay. to me. Is this carriage return functionality, the function part of it, is that a stretch goal or is that right off the Actually, bat? Actually, that's part that's built in. Again, uh, the engineer, I definitely had left room and budget to be able to do that engineering phase to make sure that some of those stretch goals, which I thought would add to the cost, would be built in. So, what it. other stretch goals do you have? Um, Besides the ding, um, people wanted uh, ISO layouts, like mul multinational layouts. Uh, so that was like, oh man, uh, I really want to. <laughs> wow. But, um, so uh, again, that I'd have to a whole new PCB, and and that costs uh, a lot of. So, but I would love to do that because a lot of my backers were unexpectedly were uh, moms and uh, uh, European, like UK folks, and uh, actually this was huge in Russia. I, I, my first Google alert was from like Russia blog. They uh, think it's blog. very modern in Russia. This is oh. <laughs> state of the art. That's why. I, oh man. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so. Not going to touch that one, huh? So okay. before our panel gives a verdict, we have gotten multiple requests from the chat room for our panel to try out yes. the keyboard. Oh, I was just going to bring that up. Yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> Don't suck up to Leo. That's my <laughs> oh, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Mike is now uh, going to type on it. What is it feel like an actual mechanical typewriter, Mike? It seems like it's a little softer than that. There's a lot of travel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It says less, but it has significant key travel. Less travel, Good. but so, but some considerable. He says significant nice key travel. Type on it, really is. is it? Good. You feel you feel like your WPM is going to go up. You know you you hit it. You know you yeah. type the letter. Yeah. You can sell this as because we all did learn on the manual typewriter, a, right? Yeah, a <laughs> cure for. Uh, Repetitive stress syndrome because you're gonna. You're what? Well, no, really, that's one of the <laughs> reasons people get RSI is because they they don't have, they're not moving their hands as much. Yeah, the Ugh. the round key definitely gets a little bit uh, of use. It's hard to it. hit. I, I had some uh, backers kind of question, oh, how long does it take uh, to get used to? Uh, sure, thank you. What do you uh, think, Mike? Your verdict? Great. Yeah, it's great. I, I'm not used to it, so that, but I'm not going to hold that against it. You would get used to it, and it's really right. a cool feeling because. There's like a deep like bowl, you know, there's a circular thing yeah, and your finger goes inside. Right. You really, really feel solid because you feel like you're really on that key. Mm -hmm. So I liked it. Yeah, interesting. Great. Okay, panel, so can we get your verdicts? No, no, I think it's really awesome. I think it's a great novelty if, if this were something that I wanted to purchase for myself. Um, I think the price is too high. I, I, I think that's where Mike came into play where he was saying either go for like the nostalgic look for it or go for the functionality. So um, I'm going to say go fun yourself on this one. It's, uh, no vote. I like it, but it's too too pricey. I think it's that's that's going to be, unless you're in Sky Mall, it's going to be a tough thing oh, to sell. Good, that's a good suggestion. So here's yeah. my, <laughs> yeah, here's my, here's my it's thing. It's going to be niche. This. Yeah, it's, it, there are a lot of uh, things about it that I really like and some things about it that seem impractical. I would want like a, a something purely designed for high performance or something purely designed for, uh, and lower cost for decorative elements and stuff like that. I tend to not like decorative things, just that's kind of a personality thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm so I'm like 50-50 on the fence, but if I really dig down deep, I have to, I'd have to. i have to say I, uh, that I'd fund that because I personally would want one. And so that's going to kick it over to I'd fund that. So I do have to make the decision yes. here. <laughs> See, here's yes. my concern. If we say go fund yourself, this is never going to happen. 
I, I know that Brian is not going to dig, dig deep in his pocket, come out with $90,000 to do this on his own. Brian, I want one. I think it's great. I'm with Mike that I would love to have it. I think there's a market for it. I don't think the price is too high. I think it might be too low. My big concern, and uh, I, I've been burned on Kickstarter, my big concern is that it's that you're not going to actually be able to do it, even if you raise the $90,000. That sure. This is going to be a real stretch. Um <sighs> I, can I can I make a comment on yes. that last point? Help me, help can, me, Mike. Can you help me. You can never you know. You can me, never Mike. know whether somebody is going to be able to do it or not. But That's I just not what get you're the on. feeling talking to this guy that he's the kind of guy who would do it. Good. I just have yeah. the you have That's faith you in Brian. Want. Yes, thank you. Quirky Toys, is that a company that's done anything else? No, this is our first. Uh, yeah, Quirky Toys, is. we incorporated that because Kickstarter requires an S-Corporation, so we did that. That was an awesome learning experience. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, to, to that point about uh, the craftsmanship, I think uh, I am a highly obsessive person. And so uh, I think in terms of the way I feel about my backers and the people that have uh, sort of the, the minority that have given me the kind of support, it's such a uh, sort of an invigorating feeling. And I feel like... Um, there, I think the the essence and the soul of Kickstarter is for a product like this. Like this can't really exist, like Leo said, without Kickstarter because it's right. so weird. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wasn't <laughs> I wasn't looking for uh, a, a mass market where I could sell no. soap. Uh, yeah. It was something that was really special. I think I feel like if I had like 500 to a thousand backers or something, the, the that you know the thousand strong, we could have something cool. And well, it breaks my heart because I like you, Brian, and I think this is a really great product that I would love to buy. I just don't think it's doable at that price. And I want you to prove me wrong. And I want a thousand other backers to go over to Kickstarter and, and prove me wrong. But I'm going to have to say, go fund yourself. The only thing they can save you at this point, if you want to get that, I'd fund that logo is the vote of the people. And uh, a tie, a tie gives them the logo. What do we got, Glenn? The chat room, while you have some very passionate supporters in there who definitely get this product, the ultimate vote, unfortunately, is go fund yourself 57 to 43 percent. Oh, breaks my mm. heart. Wow. But Brian, you got some publicity. People are going to go to that Thank site. You. Maybe it's going to turn it around at uh, right. kickstarter.com. Right, Look you. for the quirky. I think it's a cool keyboard. product. I just and I love it. I want it. I think the, the and if you build it, I'll buy change. it. I want it. I'm hoping that he that he makes it through. I will do my best. I'm wrong. Thank you, Brian. Fair Great enough. job. Thank you very Thanks. much for having me. So we're here with Brian. Brian, how do you think that went? I went pretty well. I was kind of disappointed uh, that Leo didn't find it. Uh, I thought he was supposed to be the easy, the easy mark. What, what happened? Why? Why? Um, I, you know, uh, for me, this was such a great, like, amazing creative journey. Uh, I did this a lot of it to just prove to myself that I could learn something and be creative and, and actually output something that was tangible. So it's an awesome experience. Even just being here, like, it's crazy just learning how to present my product and an idea in a way to convince other people. I mean, that's kind of like the essence of creativity anyway. So uh, this whole experience is just nothing but a win-win for me. Uh, it's disappointing. We'll see how it goes. Maybe uh, uh, maybe the few hardcore people out there that will support me that we can we can get this done uh, and uh, and then and then prove Leo wrong. If you don't hit the goal, do you see relaunching with perhaps a more modest ambition? I definitely have a plan B and a C uh, for different things uh, to be able to launch if it's not successful. But you know, I'm not sort of thinking about that right now. I'm just trying to make sure that you know I think we could still do it. I think we have really uh, uh, people that believe in this product, and, um, and we'll see. It was an awesome experience. Everyone should really try to do it and really think through what I think I'm. I'm really am thinking through what Leo said. Like. Uh, maybe maybe that isn't enough, which is really bizarre. I, I was so um, concerned about getting things cheaper that um, there are people that uh, think the other way. Like, no, you, you know, this is a great product. You need to charge a premium, but make sure you do it right. And so that's good advice. And ultimately, how do you feel about taking responsibility for just the, the hundreds upon hundreds of hipsters at Starbucks that are going to be using these in the future? It's going to be really, really challenging because uh, every Starbucks around town, no, I, I, I don't, I, I can't take responsibility for that. Next up, we have the Link, which is a device that makes any speaker wireless, and here to present are Ben Taft and Barack Kozad. Hello, Ben. Hello, Barack. Welcome. Hello. Is it Barack? Like the president? Brock. Brock. Yeah, and that, that gets mixed up and, often. And when did, you guys, uh, when did you guys graduate from middle school? Recently? Um, well, actually, elementary back. school. <laughs> I, I think you're, you're very, you know, you're we very... just graduated middle school, so <laughs> we're here. I'm so teasing you, but <laughs> are you, are you guys in college? Uh, we're just about to enter. Next year, yes. yes. Next year. So you are high school uh, High school graduate. graduates. Yes, we are. Rising freshmen. Rising freshmen, yes. yes, sir. That's exciting. What schools are you going to? 
I'm going to Southern Methodist University SMU? in Dallas. Okay. And I'm going to University of Southern California. And USC. Wow. Oh, very nice. UCLA, go Browns. Ooh, so no, this is kidding. neat. So did you uh, guys do this in high school? How did this happen? I've loved music since I was a little kid. I played classical piano. I, I uh, created a music website in high school. I recently sold it. Um, Brock and I met in our school's incubator, incubator program called Entrepreneurship Engineering. And so we knew we had to figure out a way to combine my passion, my passion for music with his passion for entrepreneurship our, our passion for entrepreneurship and you know engineering and so um, that's how we created uh, the first slide in our presentation will show vibe audio innovations and uh, the mission of our company is to advance the way we enjoy music when asked when given the option between wireless speaker systems and wired speaker systems the average consumer uh, they'd pick wire, wireless speaker systems any day of the week mm -hmm. uh, they're you know much more convenient uh, but the issue with that is that they can be between 150% and 400% more expensive. Mm. So people mm -hmm. want these wireless capabilities, but you don't want to break the bank paying for these, you know, outrageous uh, wireless speaker systems. So we thought in our entrepreneurship engineering class that there had to be some way to give people the luxury of wireless audio without the burden of its price. So we created the link. Dun dun dun. The Link is a small, portable, rechargeable device that converts any wired speaker system into a wireless one, as you can see over there. How it works, you just take your audio system's auxiliary cable, where you would normally plug it into your phone and leave it there. You would instead plug it in, into the Link. You can connect your smartphone wirelessly to the Link via Bluetooth, as seen in the after shot, and voila, no more wires. So, uh, you know, there are similar products out there uh, in the ballpark of the Link, um, but we've differentiated ourselves in many ways. Uh, you know, Sony, Belkin, Logitech, they've all made a Bluetooth adapter. Um, but the problem is most of their products require a constant power supply. So their adapter has to be plugged into a wall, while ours is fully portable with the rechargeable lithium-ion battery inside. Um, also, there are some uh, portable Bluetooth adapters, but a lot of the battery lives are, you know, just two or three hours, while we uh, really focus on making ours very long-lasting, almost 20 hours. Um, and also, uh, functionality with other Bluetooth adapters can be very confusing. Um, you know, there's a lot of extra features, a lot of buttons. It's not, you know, know exactly what it's meant for. But the Link is a very simple, user-friendly, plug-and-play product. It just makes your speakers wireless, and it's that simple. And not only is it a functional product, but our sleek design and color options really set it apart from the competition. We actually brought a product designer on board who's responsible for creating uh, various projects such as Beats by Dre headphones and RAD cameras. So we wanted, when we envisioned the design of this product uh, with our product designer, Azar, we wanted it to be something that Without even knowing what the link did, we wanted people to want it because of the cool looks, the cool sleek design. And not, not just that, but it also has very cool color options. So that's something that in our minds really separates us from, uh, from the rest of the competition. Fantastic. And as for our Kickstarter, uh, we started on June 3rd with a $50,000 goal. And we are 11 days in. We've currently raised $19,786, which is roughly 40% of our goal. Um, and ben will. Yeah, and most of the funds of our Kickstarter campaign are obviously going um, into manufacturing inventory, although we're allocating a good chunk of the budget uh, to be able to really refine the electrical engineering so that the Bluetooth aspect can be very, very a great experience for all our users, um, be able to easily connect, be able to produce incredible sound quality with no disruption, no lag, things like that. So that's where we are today. And we really appreciate uh, the opportunity to be on the show. Yeah. And uh, to all the viewers out there, if you have any questions, um, we'd love to answer them. If you want to personally email us at brock at vibeaudioinnovations.com or ben at vibeaudioinnovations.com, uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Yeah, and we'd love to answer any questions yes. you guys have. Before you answer our questions, why don't we go back to Glenn. Chat room, we want to know what you think and want to know your questions for the Link Audio team. You can ask questions in the Twitch chat using the hashtag IFT, and you can vote telling them I'd fund that or go fund yourself at twit.to slash the link. That's twit.to slash the link. So I have a couple of questions, if I may. The Logitech Bluetooth audio adapter is thirty nine thirty seven on Amazon. It's yes. not rechargeable, though. That has to be exactly. plugged into the wall, and that's the really the difference. It's very large. looks like a hockey puck or like an Apple TV exactly. type, type of thing. Yours is much smaller. What high school did you guys go to? We go to Menlo, or we went to Menlo School in Atherton. Menlo School is a great school. Actually, my uh, my half brother went there, and so they have a great entrepreneur program there. Just started this year. Yes, yes. Uh, the inaugural class. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And all uh, are all the members of your team from that program, or uh, just the three of you? Just the three just of us. Bizarre. You yeah. how'd you find your designer? Um, we just looked online. We met with a couple of different product designers, and we we were originally going to hire him with a little bit of seed money we had, but you know, he said. 
you know, don't pay us cash. It. She loved it. Like, That's you know, let's, idea, let's yeah. we'll yes. make me a co-founder. We'll be a team. And so, he has a great track record, obviously, with Beats yeah. by Dre and R.I.D. cameras. So. I'm, I'm sure your teacher brought this up, but one of the biggest issues with a product like this is not designing it, making it, it's getting distribution. You've right. got nothing unless you can get this in stores, get this where people can see it. Have you addressed that issue? Yeah, um, the first step we're going to take before we kind of worry about uh, big distribution and retail is definitely direct to consumer. Starting with the Kickstarter, we're going to be opening up our online store, and we're also going to be establishing a campus rep program, um, so that we'll have. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. We'll go to the our, colleges exactly, and sell them there. Because yeah. when, exactly. when you look at a product like this, this is perfect for any dorm. Right. Uh, you know, you want parent. Every kid wants a speaker system in their dorm, but not every parent wants to break the bank, paying between 150 and 400 percent more for a wireless speaker system. So. For the convenient price on Kickstarter of thirty dollars plus shipping, or including shipping, excuse me, you know this this turns any speaker wireless. So this is a perfect demographic for where we're headed next year in college. Exactly. So. Yeah, my son would use. He's a, good, a rising sophomore at Colorado Boulder, and oh, yeah. yeah, that's he keeps asking me, "Can I get some speakers?" Yeah. <laughs> and we've yet to find a good solution. This would be a good solution. Well, go. um, are though? Are you going to possibly make these so that you can plug them into? Into the wall, like if people want it to be wireless or not, I mean, you know, well, yeah, you either rechargeable or you can just leave it plugged in next yeah, you, to it. Yeah, you can leave it plugged in. There's okay. the option. You can, there's just a micro USB charging output, micro right. USB to USB. Um, you know, you can definitely leave it plugged in if you'd like, if you want to just keep it in okay. one spot. But, you know, it's very versatile and you can take it with take you. Take it with you. Keep it in your okay. pocket, keep it in your car. Pretty much whatever you want. Yeah. What are the colors? Uh, we're going to do uh, black, uh, red, blue. Okay. And, uh, and uh, a possible pink option later yeah. on. See how many for, girls for the ladies, you know, yes. For the ladies. <laughs> so the chat room wants to know, uh, J29 Seller wants to know, can multiple links be used from one music source? So you could like have a link in the bedroom, the bathroom, the kitchen, and all of them controlled by one iPhone. Could you do that? Uh, no, because I think that the iPhone usually just does uh, unique pairing. So That's one, right. you know, it's one a limitation of Bluetooth. One, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But for one at-home speaker system, you only need one link. But you could pair it to. That's right. You can move the link around. Exactly. You? Yeah. yeah. It's very portable, so yeah. you can move it wherever your speaker system is. Yeah. Uh, Beatmaster wants to know what Bluetooth profiles and codecs are in use. Um, so that's. That's among the things that we're going to be nailing down after our campaign. But we're going to be really figuring out the electrical engineering aspects, um, such as what Bluetooth module we're going to use, and you know things like the codecs. Those are things we're going to be really making sure we're going to nail down right after our campaign. But but have you identified a few? I mean, do you have you have a beta, right? Yeah, that works? I mean, our, current, our current prototype uses a V1.2. And uh, is it working it, effectively? It, it works yes. effectively, but we definitely think we can improve it a lot and use a okay. very new, you know, a newer uh, version of Bluetooth. Yeah. Is this an FCC Class B device? Um, we are not, we're basically using components. We're not making any new components ourselves. It's components so you, that are assembled in a case, so we're not going to have to... You don't get have to get it. approval. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Eric Duckman in the chat wants to know how many milliamp hours? Um, is the, the battery or the yeah. module or... Um, the, uh, the battery is about 2,000 milliamp hours, and the, your standard module, uh, your Bluetooth module, will use around 100. So that's where that's you would get 20 the 20 hours. hour rest. 20 minutes. hours, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And how many no. of these can you manufacture? I mean, where are you planning on to have these made? We have quotes, both domestic and international. Um, we're definitely hoping to be able to produce a high enough quantity to go to China mm -hmm. um, within the five to 10,000 quantity ballpark. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if we, uh, if we want to produce domestically in our first run and lower the quantities, lower our margins a little bit, just to make sure you know, quality assurance being here um, in the country, we might do that as well. Yeah. Okay. My biggest concern is that so many speaker systems these days already have this built into them. I think most people are going to already have this. Um, it would be great, I guess, if you... It's analog only out of there, no optical coming out of there. It's, it's like a little headphone jack, yeah, right? But yes. Yeah, let me, let me really quickly let you know that in 2013, $10 billion worth of speakers were purchased. 97.5% of them were wired, 2.5% were wireless, largely due to the price difference. So That's interesting. Yeah. All right, that's a good wow. point. All right. So people might be looking for a way to make those yes, wired definitely. speakers definitely. wire less. Yes. The more you hear a lot about wireless capabilities uh, with Jambox and uh, Bose speakers, but you know, from from our market or from our research, we found uh, it's that, a luxury. Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's a small number of people um, who are have the you know these wireless capabilities. Yeah, I like it that you were able to respond yep. so effectively. But Ben and Brock, I gotta say, I just feel like this is a tough business. It's competitive. Uh, I'm just gonna have to say I I can't fund this one. I'm sorry, guys. No problem. Yeah, I think I think it's a it, it's a really interesting um, product. Um, I'm not sure I, I I care that much about the color part of it. Um, I don't think this is the kind of product 
that is all about accessorizing and having certain colors and that sort of thing. But I don't think that counts against you. Uh, I just don't personally think that that's uh, worth your time to, to pursue that. I think you just make a black one or something like that, maybe two colors or whatever. Um, it seems low cost, and if it works, and if it works well, I think it's a good, it's a very practical thing more than anything else, I think. Because people have these old PC speaker systems lying around, and they plug their, their phone directly into it, and then their phone has to sit on the table. And then they go and they uh, are in the kitchen or whatever, and the phone rings, and it's so loud when the phone rings when your phone is plugged in and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, there are like all these little, little annoying things that people experience that this product uh, could solve uh, very nicely. So I'm going to say I'd fund that. Thank you. Yeah, I was on the fence on this one, but I think the colors make sense if you're going to really push this in college dorms because yeah. kids want colors. They want choices. They they like that kind of thing. And uh, I have wireless speakers, so I wouldn't buy this for myself. But if I had my son in college and he's like, Mom, I want something, this might work for them. So if it works, and and based on the price point, I'd say I'd fund that too. Thank you. Thank you. So I think you have two two yeses, one two no. yeses, That's one uh, no. What well, by the way, what grade did you get on this? Hey, we got we, a's we got a's. Of course you got of course a's. They I did. Would, I, and by the way, guys, <laughs> I on give Kickstarter. you a plus. It's an excellent, it's excellent uh, product. Well, I just you. feel like I think the price point's a, right. They a, just better make sure they they get it out. I mean, mono, you're right. It's, mono, it's a tough price, business. Mono it's price makes right. something similar for twenty bucks. It's a tough business to get into. Right. Glenn, what do the what do the people say? The people in the chat room say, by a margin of 53 to 47%, I'd fund that. You got funded. So you guys got thumbs up right on the Kickstarter. We appreciate it. Congratulations, guys. Thanks for having us on the show. Nice job. One last piece of advice. Well, but one last piece of advice: if you're going to be entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley, nobody wears a tie. So just. You know what though? Because we were young. These gentlemen have class. That's right. So I, I kind of, I disagree with that. I think they look great. So I appreciate that. Thank you oh, for having us. Thank right. you, guys. Thank Brock you and Ben, here. well done. Excellent. And the Menlo School, well done on a great entrepreneurial program. Yep. I think thank that's you. fabulous. So I'm here with Ben and Brock from the Link Audio, straight out of Atherton, and fresh from their experience on I'd Fund That. What did you guys think of the process? Um, it was really helpful. Got a lot of great feedback, both from the judges and from all the people in the chat room. Uh, it was tough. You know, they grilled us on a couple questions, but it's ultimately, it's ultimately, it's these kind of questions that, you know, help you learn about your business better and make you more successful in the long run. So we really liked the experience. What advice would you give to future candidates appearing on the show? Um, well, I'd say having a, I, we found that having kind of a presentation, almost a PowerPoint lined out, giving, giving people, uh, give the panel and the people viewing a um, real outline of your product, we found that that was very effective for our presentation. And uh, if this goes well, what's next? Um, we're definitely going to look into an expanded product line. Um, there's definitely other inputs that you know you can that speakers use, such as iPhone docks, iPhone 4, iPhone 5, kind of the Lightning, the 30 pin. Uh, there's RCA jacks, you know, just all these different types of uh, wires and cables and inputs that are ready to be made wireless. So we're ready to do that. Next up, we have the Shirley Box, which is a private and shareable cloud on your desk. And here to present is Blase. Welcome. How are you, the Blase? Shirley what box, do you got? Huh? Hi, Please everyone. don't call me Shirley. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> yeah. Nice, Mike. Uh, go ahead. Yeah. Please, so, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for having me. So this is a, a device already funded, so we're stretching now to make it a bit even better. So this is a private uh, uh, cloud, what we call it. But actually, it solves much greater problem than just storing your files, because I think Sync sucks. Sync sucks. Sync sucks. Thank you. So what we do is we want to be a next thing after the sync. Means we want to be smart enough to know which files you need where, and we only predict that. So you don't, you, we have many devices, but actually what we use it is already a different purpose. Every device is used for different reason. Creates, I mean, you use it for specific, uh, to fulfill specific need. Mm -hmm. So file distribution and file uh, also uh, delivery should be aware of that context. Right now, every device is single universe. Mm -hmm. And syncing is just, I'm going to bet 95% of just waste of bandwidth and resources mm -hmm. because you sync everything you might need, but actually you don't. You actually need the files that you accessing like last three days or the specific to your situation or location. For example, at work, you're accessing work files. At home, you're accessing private files. And we want to create a software that will be aware of that. It will be predictive and it will be on your terms. It means you're not, you're not dependable on somebody else. So first thing we do, we don't send files anywhere. You send invites. So I'm creating a folder, putting my files there, and sending invites to my friends, and they see it on my Shelly box. That's it. 
and we control it through the application, which is right now uh, Mac, Windows, and very soon will be Linux. And then we go for mobile, and then we go for other storage uh, platforms out there. We are very fast, so we also want to retire this very old uh, transfer protocols we currently use. It's like Civ Samba hasn't changed in 20 years. Our files are getting bigger. 4K is reality. These this files are really big, and we have to move them around. The actual network is really fast. Do you complain that your cell phone uh, bandwidth is low, or you actually complain that battery sucks? Mm -hmm. So mobile versus regular network is not that big of a difference anymore. What is the problem is you want to access your files, and of course, mobile devices don't, will never contain all the files you actually need. So it's better than syncing and stuffing your drive with files you don't currently need, is having persistent, secure access to stuff you have at home, at office, anywhere uh, you want, actually. Hmm. So uh, we already uh, passed the first uh, first goal on day fifth of the campaign. We are in the, in the middle, 19 days to go. And currently we're stretching to make this device even better because we want, we started with very simple Raspberry Pi platform. Now we want to move to another flavor, which banana. is banana. <laughs> <laughs> and banana is much better, uh, not even for the flavor, uh, actually, I prefer banana over raspberry any day. <laughs> but actually, the, on the network, on the on the gut itself. So, obviously, we want to work the best hardware out there. The, there is a cost involved, and we want to make it very affordable. That's why we go for 199. We don't want to make it very too expensive. We want to be like no brainer to get it. 199 without storage. With storage. With one, storage. One terabyte wow. storage. 199. Wow. 149 with other. But actually, there is a USB expansion. You can connect all your USB drives lying around in drawers somewhere with your fi fine Hawaii trip photos. You can, now you can just share it with your friends without sending it every, right. everything to right. them. Is it Blaze? Blaze. Blaze. It's a Polish Blase. name. Polish. I'm from Poland. Chat room. We want to hear your questions about the Shirley box. Ask them in the Twitch chat using the hashtag IFT. You can also vote. Tell them whether I'd fund that or go fund yourself at twit.to slash Shirley. That's twit.to slash S-H-E-R-L-Y. But as always, I'd wait to vote till we ask some questions because I'm very interesting about this. Now, I have used many devices like this. I've used Tonito Plug. I've used, uh, uh, I currently use a transporter, file transporter, which has many of the same uh, features uh, as this. And of course, going way back, uh, the Pogo Plug, yeah. uh, when they still offered a hardware uh, solution. Um, I think these are a great idea, and I think you, the market is ripe for this because people who are who are afraid of using OneDrive or Google Drive uh, or Dropbox because they were worried about privacy concerns like the idea Absolutely. of hosting. Tell me about the encryption. Is it uh, how is data transported to this? Uh, is it only within the LAN? If you have transport outside the uh, onto the WAN, is it okay. encrypted? So connection between your device and your Shirley box is always encrypted. Yeah. Data when you transfer is also always encrypted. Okay. SSL. So any, yes. Yeah. And there is a, SSL is just a transport conduit. Actually, right. we encrypt data itself. You act, so it's stored on the drive, encrypted as well. Uh, that's that's the user decision. Uh, you can okay. make it encrypted, but you don't have to. Okay. That's a pendant of like what you have on uh, on your network because obviously. The encryption will create some kind of uh, strain on on Overhead. on, on yeah. performance. Right. So if you uh, if you're more concerned about security, you can encrypt any, anything. Plus, we can also uh, we're already, we're already uh, uh, secure enough that if somebody will try to access your device, like laptop, and connect to your Shelly box, it will not be possible because you, the, your laptop is linked to only your right. account. As long as they don't steal the device out of your house, if they, if you're worried about that, then you would want to encrypt the data on the drive. Yeah, actually, so. if they steal it, they will not be able to access it because data will not be accessible without your account. What file system mm. are you using? Our own property. And you're actually, not using SMB. You're using your own proprietary no, file network. Protocol is our proprietary file system. The way we actually store the files will be Linux based. A a ext3 or yes, so, yeah. exactly. Um, you guys have any questions? Because I, I could go on and on. I don't want to Well, it's just, this. I don't know. I mean, to me, I don't really use something like this. I have almost everything in the cloud. I don't need things to be so heavily encrypted that I've used something like this. Yeah. So um, I, I'm not really sure of, as to what's out there either with well, regards well, to this. Well, one of the things that's out there is ProtoNet, which was one of the huge crowdfunding uh, success stories. They, they, they won a, a million bucks in like an hour and a half or something like that. Right. How is your product different from ProtoNets? ProtoNet, I mean, is always in German. My German is a little rusty. So I base what I know is like 1,000 euro device, which is quite expensive and quite big. And it's actually a private server. 
I was in distribution for eight years. I know the server is actually hard sell because most people don't care about hardware. They care about functionality it brings. Mm -hmm. So the device itself is not really a uh, value. What it gives you, that's the value. So that's why we want to make this as, f as affordable as possible. And we don't, we didn't go into like top notch uh, hardware right from the point because we'll be ended up with a really high price point. So how do you sell something like this? I mean, it, 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 how do you explain this to the lay consumer? Do you scare them with the NSA? Do you t talk no, I, about the ease of use? What What is it that you use to sell actually this? Actually, it's a more convenience. I don't want to have okay. like scary story there. I think it's convenience. Like you showed a video, one minute video is only 100 max. There's nothing you can send it with. You can, you, I mean, you cannot send it with email. You cannot uh, I message it. You have to put it somewhere. And for me, the notion to upload it everything to the cloud just to be able to show it to somebody is like ridiculous. I don't need to do that. I can do the same thing with my home, plus oh, my office network, plus I don't have these, these storage uh, constraints. I don't have to pay for it because I already have a storage. Why do I pay twice for the same thing? So you question, yeah, you can put everything on the cloud, but the point is that uh, if you share it with somebody, it will take a chunk of their account too, because it will sink. Right. With us, it's not. It's actually you don't create this kind of, as we call it, bear favor. You're going to integrate with Plex or X, XNBC? Yes, or, yeah. for, the, for the convenience of actually viewing the files. So I love Plex. We, I'm using it for many years. It's right. actually great. You wouldn't run it locally. You wouldn't be a Plex server, or would yeah, you? Yeah, Plex server will be on this. Really? I yeah, and they can, you can stream on your TV, on your mobile. It's, uh, and Xbox. the Raspberry Pi or the Banana Pi is fast enough to do that? Yeah, I yeah. mean, the, the transcoding is being done on the client It's itself. already done, yeah. yeah so yeah. it's actually depending on your client, on your device you're watching. TV, for example, is powerful enough to transcode uh, uh, HD stream. The same goes for, for mobile. A lot of this comes down to trust in, in you guys, because um, I like what you're saying. I mean, I think this is a very uh, attractive product, but you're making some promises that are kind of interesting. For instance, it sounds like in addition to TLS, you're using some sort of proprietary encryption inside the tunnel. Is that the case? I'm concerned uh, about the, the protocol, protocol you're proprietary. using. This encryption will be a definitely a standard base. Standard. And yes. the, the Shirley protocol is your own protocol. Yes. So what's, what's, your, what's the background? Do you have partners on this? Or is it just you? Who's no, I have a team. I mean, I have three developers, five guys full time, uh -huh. back in, in, uh, in Poland. Plus, mm -hmm. we have outside uh, resources like marketing and. And, and you've done other, technically, you've done other stuff like this. It sounds like you have a VPN. Protocol that yes, we started with technology actually. Yeah. Uh, we call it gateless VPN. It was a v actually the Shelly technology is based on VPN. Mm -hmm. So VPN normally requires a server. We develop a VPN, we call it gateless VPN that does not require a server. A server is like a control point, not the congestion point. Right. So not everything goes to, to the uh, central point. So client server architecture does not scale. I mean, you can kill any server, even right. in the cloud. If you just right. rush it with uh, a lot of demand, it will, bug I mean, it will fail. With a distributed network, it's much, much, much harder to cause any kind of noticeable uh, problem. One of the things I love about my transporter, and I've, been, I've actually moved everything to the transporter, is that I can have a transporter here, and I can have a transporter at home, and they will synchronize as well as synchronize with the desktop. I can do that with the Shirley Absolutely. Box as well. Absolutely. The point is that we, we, design it, we design the Shirley Box for sharing. So the point is that you actually don't manage it yourself. You just have it connected, that's all, and you do everything on your app. It's a NAS, though, basically, isn't it? Yes, yes. with our special software. So yeah. regularly, this, that's NAS. Right. So, you, so you said you can synchronize. How hard is that to do? To synchronization synchronize? is yeah. very simple. To and, do. and it's built into your app? Yeah. I okay. mean, we synchronize only between devices, but if you wanted to. I, I mean, see. But, but that's like, a feature of your app. This okay. is a feature, not obligation, not like a, our, our uh, type of what we do. Mm -hmm. It's like mostly it's secure access, and then you decide what you want to do. I, right. In the future, we want to develop this intelligence into the software. And as they're saying your point, you don't have to trust me with anything, right. because all I have is account information. Right. I verified you are you. That's why you, be, you can access your infrastructure. But the data itself is always you. I don't have your data. So, so you do maintain a server at the Shirley side that is an authenticating server? Authentication and uh, initial connection. Then you talk directly. So you're doing that translation so that you don't have Absolutely. to work. Absolutely. Now I see that I press the button three times on my Shirley to join. Is that WPS? What is, it's wireless. It's not, uh, it's not Ethernet. 
Or yeah, is it? it's both. It's, it's both. both. Yeah. Okay. The point is that with regular NAS, the onboarding is a real problem. I yep. mean, if you talk to talk to regular user, to ask to HTTP 192, blah blah blah, it will lose them already. So with with us, it's very simple. To if we have a custom app our own and our own uh, Shelly box, we can like detect the Shelly box, and now we I need the confirmation like this is really yours. So press the logo three times. Now, if you don't maintain the authentication server, does this stop working? On local network, not. You can still access it like regular. But the remote the access will still work, obviously. Cloud. Okay. But the, on local network, it's all your, always yours. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, B Master wants to know at what stage of R and D is this, and are the specs already set? Specs for device? Yeah. Specs for the device are listed on the Kickstarter, and we just released, launched uh, 0.91 beta of our Shelly application. So we're very close. We are going to be launching public version this fall. So anybody wants to try it out, just go to the website, uh, shell.ly, download the software, it's free. Oh, that's Ch interesting. Yeah. It's not open source, though. It's no, closed source. it's no. ours. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, that covers the next question. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I keep asking the same questions. Uh, Mr. As Mike wants to know, how do we give invites and rescind them to our clouds? Uh, you send an invite through email. Or, uh, can you rescind it afterwards? Can you cancel it? Yes. And you can also revoke the uh, revoke access. It. Yeah. Okay. So and what levels of uh, access permission do I have? What kinds do you have? Read, write, write, read only? The thing is that we do it this way that if you sync regularly and you sync with, share with other people, other people can delete your files. Right. That's one of the problems. Big with problem sync. with Dropbox, for instance. Yeah, yeah. We don't do that. It means if I share something with you guys, you can erase, uh, erase your copies, but only I can uh, erase the my data. Plus, yeah. I can revoke access. And so they can't modify anything at all? They can put it on version of the file, but they cannot modify my if okay. I don't allow it. Okay. Later but you on, can you yes, can yes. say give permissions. You can edit this file yes. or not edit the yes. file. Okay. I, uh, that's not ready yet. Okay. We'll, we'll be implementing these features down the road. We don't want to overwhelm overwhelm people with many features at once. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as of right now, I can't go. Hey, I'm sharing something with you. It's private. Make some modifications. If they do, can they save it there? You can, they can save it in the same uh, file. It will be a different file. It's just a different file. You, you want that. That way you have, versions, you have yeah. versioning. So you well, don't. yeah, but sometimes you may not want that, but they're working on that second yeah. part. Okay. Yeah, actually, the versioning is, is really good for if you have like a master file and you over accidentally overwrite it. I spent like several times oh, yeah. sitting to 4 a.m. to recover what I had in my original file. Right. Yeah. Morbid curiosity. Why? Why press it on three times? Why three times? <laughs> Why not just once? It could be one, it could be two, <laughs> it could be ten. To make sure that you make met sure it. Make sure it's yours. It's for example, you have, for example, ten of those, mm -hmm. and you want to connect with particular one. I need to know which one you wanted to, uh, to connect, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to identify it. I mean, I could ask you, like, can you type in a MAC address? Oh, yeah, that would be really fun. <laughs> so that's why pressing the logo or actually doing anything else to distinguish between devices and also prove it's yours. I'm very intrigued it's by this gateless VPN. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, why not open source? Because one of the one of the problems I always have is that if I can't see the code, I don't know what it's doing. I agree, but uh, hardly problem. It was open source and still was there. So I yeah, wouldn't say right. open source is guarantee that's of, right. of quality. And TrueCrypt, <laughs> we don't know what the hell they were doing. Well, so. I'm using TrueCrypt, but now I don't know what's the thing. Right. And right. I love the true crypt. So it doesn't I agree, it doesn't solve necessarily and solve I'm that taking, problem. As a company, I'm standing 100% behind my software. Right. And I think with open source, I like it really. But the problem is that nobody there is taking responsibility for the problem. That's right. I'm, with my software, I'm taking full responsibility for my software. You're using RSA? What are you using for encryption? Oh, there's actually various of uh, uh, many things we, we use. Uh, RS, uh, RSA, yes, absolutely. IAS, 256. And there is also asymmetric codes of exchange and private keys, public keys, which are dynamic and change. So you can also do symmetric? Can you do symmetric yes, as well? Yeah. We so these are all standards. So that's, I mean, that's great. That's I mean, standard. we know that these are yeah. standard forms of encryption and that they're effective and work. Any other questions, chat room? Uh, Mr. Mike wants to know, have they considered just selling the software? We are. Oh, absolutely. We're right selling it. the software. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And uh, then lastly, our very own Jeff N. wants to know, why is it called the Shirley Box? Yeah, good question. Uh, actually, we came up with the name with my co-founder, Mark, was sitting one day. It was like, we have to make it the name. And I was like baffling this for like six months. What is the name? I mean, name has to be right. You, you say the name, it's like, that's it. Like my son, my son's name, Jacob. Yes. <laughs> it was like instant choice. Surely. Yeah. So actually, Shirley comes from sharing, uh, sharing uh, secure easily. Ah, I like Put it. Put it together. 
And I why like .ly? Because uh, a domain was available. Uh, Shelly.com was $84,500. I'm going to pass. So Shelly <laughs> and Shelly Box, obviously, it's a box and right. Shelly on it. So Shelly Box. Hmm. Um, awesome. And it's a woman's name, and it's a machine, so you know. Yeah, no, Shelly. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Surely you must be you must be kidding. Yeah, you yeah. Got, I think it, it's Mike got a good. Mike did that job. right away. Yeah. On that one. So, panel, what's uh, what are your verdicts? Mike, you get to start. Okay, wonderful. Well, I or, want, yeah, I think yeah, it's Mike's turn. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll go next. All right. Well, I wanted to I wanted to hate this. I wanted to pick it apart and find something wrong with it, but I can't. The price is amazing. It sounds like you've really got the technology nailed down. I think I can really see people want you know wanting this product. I think the time is right for this product because of the NSA, even though you're not mm -hmm. going to be uh, pushing that as a as a scaring people into buying it. But people do people are concerned about about the cloud, about cloud storage, and so on. And I think that it should be an easy sell to let people know that you're hanging on to the data and you're giving people access to something that's on your possession and is person to person. And I don't know, it just seems like an awesome product, and I'd fund that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll have to agree with Mike because I was going like, why do I need another yet storage device for my files and things like that? Um, but in looking at this, I don't know if I would necessarily use this that much, but given your price point, and I know how Leo likes to have all these encrypted devices laying around with, for his files. I mean, I use share files, so um, that works for me. But uh, I think this would be great for, for the price, the type of product it is. So yes, I'd fund that too. Thank That's you. a really important point. This is one of the lowest priced products in this. I've category. never seen I've one this seen, price. Right. You know, a, a terabyte drive is a hundred bucks. So for two hundred bucks, I get this plus a terabyte drive. That's a very it's very compelling. Price. And I guess that's because of the Raspberry Pi and, and or, or Banana Pi. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you've put a lot of work into the software. Uh, uh, always a problem with stuff like this is uh, the devil is in the details. The devil is in the software. And until we can use the software and see how easy to, to use it is. It's hard for me to say whether it's going to be a great product. It seems to me, though, you've checked all the most important boxes. Um, I can see why it's been popular on Kickstarter. I can see why you got funded right away. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think given the low price of this, that's a low risk uh, to get involved, um, uh, I'd be very interested in this. So I'm going to say I'd fund it as well. I think you've got Thank three you so out much. of three. Let's see if the chat room agrees. So this, I think, might be a first in that the panel... All voting, uh, I'd fund that. The chat room, by a margin of, or by a, a vote of 53 to 47 percent, says go fund yourself. Really? Uh -huh. So, really? Uh, I think this is, a, I think this is a great product. We obviously like it. The chat room, perhaps for reasons. Very close. It's close. It's I think close. some of that is a natural concern about who you guys are and Agreed. what the software is behind this. Um, uh, and I, I, I do agree with that. I, I, I can understand that. But I think this is the time is right for a product like yep. this. I like the industrial design a lot. I think it's an attractive design. I like it that it's Wi-Fi, which my transporter is not. Mm -hmm. Transporter is somewhat more expensive than this. So I think you've got a hit on your hands. I, I do I'm too. very excited. And I can't wait to try Thank it. The so Shirley much. Box. Thank you so much. We give you a I'd I fund like that. You can put that yeah. on your site. Well, Congratulations and Thank good you. luck to you. I uh, yeah. will look forward to seeing more about that. Thank you so uh, much. This. Thank Thank you. Right. This is Excellent. like beginning. We're very excited to be Yeah, I can see that. Level. Yeah, I can see that. It's really, it uh, looks like good stuff. So I'm here with Blase from Shirley Box. Uh, Blase, how do you think it went? Oh, I think it was well. I was uh, very nervous in the beginning. There was a couple of uh, TV appearances before, but uh, you know, uh, the, the stress was there. But once we started, I think everything, you know, led to, one thing led to another. It was really good. I was really uh, think I get across what I wanted to, to, uh, to show and, and demonstrate. So that was an I'd fund that first where we had the judges all unanimously saying they'd fund it. But just by a slim margin, the chat room was against it. I think some of their concerns had to do with the lack of open source and with not knowing more about the encryption. Uh, do you think that's going to be a stumbling block with the more hardcore tech types with this product? Uh, I think uh, this is a natural thing uh, for the software that is kind of related to personal trust towards technology or the software or the hardware. So obviously we're going to put more work into explaining what we do, how we do it. We're going to put more materials on our website to explain what the technology actually does. So what advice do you have to future candidates coming on I'd fund that? Yeah, probably uh, try to be scum. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I, I guess uh, it's like... I think the, the most important thing is that forget the camera. Just talk to people and, and answer the questions and things will be fine. And next up is Robotar, which is a guitar cord robot that helps you play the guitar. Here to talk about it is Kevin. 
Hi. Welcome, Kevin. Hey, Kevin. Thank you. This is uh, my daughter, Anna, and my son, Ian. See, that's not fair. You brought children on. Yes. I don't know. They're awfully cute. <laughs> I, uh... It's okay. You know, it's a tactic, right? <laughs> Good so. tactic. <laughs> he's got to explain that these kids are going to go to college, and they're gonna, he's going to need a lot <laughs> of right. money. Exactly. <laughs> Somebody's got to take over the business when that's we're right. successful, right? Um, so Robotar is a robotic chord hand for the guitar. I've got a couple of uh, versions here to demonstrate. Um, if you guys can, imagine one of, your, one of these following scenarios. You're either a um, singer-songwriter, and you want to experiment with lyrics or musical um, uh, structure of a song, or you want to experiment with rhythm or lyrics. Um, you can use Robotar to actually play a song without having to learn the chords. All you do is strum. All you do is strum. You, uh, you're still in control of the song. You use a foot pedal to change the chords. Um, some other, some other scenarios are you're a music therapist or a teacher, and you're teaching young kids with delicate fingers, and you mm -hmm. want to teach them how to uh, engage in music in a different way. Um, currently, a lot of kids are limited to xylophones and tambourines. I think this is mm -hmm. maybe another option. Um, and then also, if you're a seasoned guitarist and you want to maybe experiment with playing both um, rhythm and lead on the same guitar, you can do that with Robotar. But the um, the most important um, kind of catalyst for me putting this together was um, my father, who actually played guitar his entire life and had a stroke, and he lost the use of his uh, his left hand actually. Um, and is so, that what originally inspired the product in the first it place? It did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So actually, he has one right now, and he's playing guitar again after 20 oh, years of great. not playing. Mm -hmm. um, and since I've started, the first prototype was rather clunky. This is the second prototype, and now we've got the uh, Kickstarter version here on my left. The way that it works is it clamps onto the neck of the guitar. One of the main questions we always get is, can it slide further up and down? Um, the nice thing about uh, having a robotic hand is that you don't have the limitation of four fingers. So you can actually uh, create any chord that you can dream up in the first four frets of the guitar. Oh, it doesn't need to slide up. Um, there are a few limitations on higher notes on the first couple of strings. Um, you can get around most of those with a single finger if you really need it. Um, and the way that it works, we have some software that goes along with it. You actually create the chords in the software, and as you save the chords, you can uh, put them in sequence in a song. Once they're in the song, then you simply play. And uh, with, uh, on the software, you can actually see when you um, demo it that you plug in the song with the chords <coughs> in sequence, you put in the lyrics that you want, and you place the chords over the top of the lyrics in the appropriate spot. You push the pedal, and it'll highlight the, the chord on the uh, software that you're playing, mm -hmm. and you strum along or finger pick, let go, and then press again for the next chord. <clears throat> so the best way to understand it is to give it a try. Um, so I'd love to have a volunteer. I'll do it. All right. Lisa's, Lisa <laughs> says she won't. I'll, I'll step up here. Let me take My oh, question on, is, can you use it to cheat you. in Guitar Hero? So <laughs> this is really, you're really playing guitar, and yeah. I think uh, some real guitarists might get mad at me saying that. It's not intended to replace um, learning guitar. Yeah. That's, that's not the intention of it. It is for people that um, maybe have always wanted to play mm -hmm. but have never had the, the time um, to learn. Um, it's for those that may have a limitation mm -hmm. and can't play, um, and it's, uh, um, you know, outside of that, it's a nice novelty to play guitar for anybody that you guys mentioned karaoke earlier mm -hmm. for one of yeah. them you know this is another sure. option for karaoke you can play along with your favorite songs and sing um and we had a lot of demos at the maker fair and a couple of we were at the solid conference and people came along and they would play and we had a couple of sing-alongs break out it was it was it's, a lot of fun it's, pretty, it's yeah. amazing i mean it's like a robot it, yeah let's All right, give so it a try Yes. So while Leo's getting set up, if you want to ask questions about mm. Robotar, please do in the Twit chat. Use the hashtag IFT, and you can vote. Go to twit.to slash Robotar, and you can vote either I'd fund that or go fund yourself. We'll be back with the results I later in the ask. show. All right. First of all, what I'd like for you to do is choose a song that we have in the list. So um, we have Take Stairway It Easy. Stairway to Heaven. Can I play that? You can give it a try. This is one that you actually need one finger for. But... <laughs> I got one finger. You can actually try the intro to Stairway He, he gave some, some of the previous uh, Kickstarter campaigns a finger, too. So. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> All right. And here's a pick for you. Okay. Now, this is just the intro to Stairway to Heaven. So what do and I do? I just strum? You're going to put your foot down on the pedal and hold okay. it down. Okay. And while you have it down, 
the chord is actually actuated on Robotar right now. Okay. So go ahead and strum. And then you let go and press again for the next chord. So, so you have a lot of rhythm. What happened there? <laughs> so let's, that, there's another song that kind of is Maybe a little a bit nicer. Song, yeah. it, it comes Eagles, across nicer, Eagles. right? Eagles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is. So I put my foot down and strum. And strum. This is. You can follow along here on the lyrics. Right here, okay. you're on "Take It Easy." Take it easy. <laughs> Don't let the sound of your own wheels drive you crazy. That's not the sound of my wheels driving me crazy. You might, you might want to actually follow that. <laughs> Please. <laughs> do, do you have a robo voice? No. Leo. Okay. Okay. We no, no more singing, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but remember, <clears throat> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but you're also left-handed. Uh, well, I'm lefty, but I don't think that matters shouldn't, too much. Shouldn't matter. Why don't you do? Demonstrate. <laughs> demonstrate. Here, I'll give you your finger. Here, why don't you demonstrate for us? I think that's All right. what I do. Yeah, I would rather have a professional Somebody demonstrate I'm, this. I'm not quite a professional. Professional robotarist. And do you guys know the words to this song? Everybody sing along. You don't want me singing. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Look at notice his left hand is doing nothing. That's interesting. Very nice. Golf clap. Golf clap. <laughs> so what happens if you miss the pedal? If you miss your timing on the pedal. You can you can accelerate your pressing to get back to where you want, okay. or just stop pressing and gotcha. and you'll you'll you be back up. in the song. The, I mean, um, if you want to use this for teaching um, guitar, if you want to learn how uh, to play guitar, um, my suggestion is learn how to play guitar. <laughs> this is not for that. It's not for that. It's yeah. um. This is like an auto harp. This is something that will. Pick out the chords for you. It will pick out the chords for you, allow you to concentrate on lyrics and music. Where it can help teach, though, is uh, rhythm. Um, <laughs> as was just demonstrated, some, yes, people, some people have rhythm. Maybe use some more practice with um, strumming and the, uh, the construction of a song. I'm right. sorry, Leo. No, <laughs> no, 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 you can I, totally say I, that. I did not want to do this, but Lisa refused. I guess we should have let Mike No, play. no, no. Yeah, that was yeah. perfect. Yeah. So It was the right choice. I think the thing that's amazing is that, are you a robotics designer? What's your background? I, right. I'm a senior director of IT at a local Fortune 500 company. It's very impressive that you were able, because I've never seen anything like this, oh. that you were able to design something. You're a maker, I guess? Yes, or, yeah. Because, I mean, uh, can you show us the inside? Is it possible? I mean, what sure. is going on there? Is, are there little servos? There that are. I imagine that there's like a Terminator sees. hand inside there. Yeah, that's like, what right. it feels like, doesn't it? Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, I think this is really found it in a vault. innovative and incredible. Wait, there so can, can I just back up and play like the layman here? What is this for really then? I mean, it's just to learn rhythm, to learn song. I mean, so as I what would I use this for? Uh, the main audience is this for those that have a limitation in one of their hands. So, okay. Um, like, but, like his father, who's a guitarist. No, I understand. To make music. But we've talked about that. We've talked about teaching and rhythm and mm -hmm. all of this. I'm trying to understand, if you're trying to sell me this product, why am I interested in it? I want to you understand would, the marketing pitch. Yeah, behind you would it. be you would be interested in it if you were interested in playing music, mm -hmm. if you were interested in singing. Um, right now, the only option for singers is either to sing to the radio or to sing with somebody else accompany them, unless they play their own instrument. Right. So right now, this gives a new option for anybody that wants to practice singing. They want to write music. Um, this is completely flexible to be able to write your own music. Mm -hmm. If you're a guitarist um, and you want guitarists are um, many that I know they 
seek out different devices that will help them experiment with different sounds. This is uh, an option to actually play rhythm using this, mm -hmm. so some normal blues, uh, blues rhythms, and then uh, lead further up the neck that can experiment with um, melodies. Uh, I had, on, in fact, on my um, Robotar um, video, there's a, a professional jazz musician who plugged in some chords, played the chords with this, and then played melodies up here. And oh, that's neat. One of his comments was this actually opens up um, options for guitarists to develop melodies and play chords at the same time, similar to uh, how someone might on a piano. Okay. So right, today you can't really do that on a guitar. So how much, are, how much is this costing and what do you get with it? So I mean, we have an price? entry level with uh, lower end servos um, and we're working on a way to make sure that those lower end servos can actually perform well. I'm actually recommending the higher end servos, which, are, which is in this one. The lower end is uh, 319, the higher end is 745. Okay. The, uh, the thing I find servos. most interesting is the maker kit which is 175 bucks if you're a maker yep. uh the instructions everything you need to know how to do this yourself and i think that's very interesting i think there's a market for makers who might want to build something like this yeah i think um the uh the interesting components in this and the software that goes along with it can actually be expanded to manipulate servos in many different ways right. so um, the idea here is that now uh, there's a way to and there's a, a bunch of different ways to do this with arduino or some other micro microcontrollers but um, we actually figured out how to do it with um, a yo-yo microcontroller which interfaces with uh, android so right now this is bluetooth capable oh, um, it's also android capable so i could actually run the same software i have on my laptop on a on a uh, uh, a uh, handheld device hey guys <laughs> on a handheld device, tablet, or phone, mm -hmm. and I can see the cords on that tablet, so I don't need a, a laptop in front of me, and I can be wireless. And did you print the pieces 3D printer? These uh, are all 3D printed through Shapeways. Um, I just um, contracted somebody local to actually build out um, and send me the, um, the case and all the parts for it at a much lower cost. Um, Shapeways, the quality is really great, but... Um, but it's actually not too bad coming from the, the local provider as well. That's really cool. That's really cool. I don't really have a question other than to throw out a pointless suggestion that it could also be used in a band with, you have a keyboard player and you just need like, you know, you need 30 seconds of a guitar. Yeah. They could use one hand for the keyboard and the other hand for the guitar. Anyway. We had a couple of high school kids in um, at the Maker Fair come by and mm -hmm. we were kind of joking around that they've got a friend that plays uh, drums and another friend that plays bass and they want to start a band. Well, all of a sudden you can mm -hmm. plug yourself in and have some fun. It's, yeah. You know. I love your kids. I got to say, <laughs> Ian and Anna, you're adorable. Glenn? So, a so, couple questions. Uh, Abstruse wants to know how much does it weigh? It's about a pound, actually. The plastics aren't that heavy. Probably the heaviest part of it are the servos that are inside of it. Um, but I have to say, having used it, it does just unbalance the guitar a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a lot of what you were feeling was the, um, the power cord. So oh. with the longer power cord, okay. Um, okay. you were pulling up the... Uh, it was pulling me down. Yeah. Got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I, basically, I screwed it up in every way you possibly can, short of unplugging it. <laughs> All right. uh, Mr. Mike wants to know, where do they get the songs from? In terms of importing them and how you to... Can, you can build any of your own songs. So um, ultimateguitar.com, you can uh -huh. go out and see all the chords required. So use the tabs. You can use the tabs, plug them in. Um, it's, it's very easy to build. In fact, there was a guy uh, that demoed it that had his own song that he wanted to plug in. Oh, we man. plugged it in in about five minutes and he played, uh, he had arthritis in one hand and he played his song that he hadn't played for quite a few years. Um, uh, you can, you plug them in yourself or they're XML files so you can share them. Um, we're also, uh, next step is to create a sharing website where people can share songs. That's all we have from the chat, although I do want to point out this actually ties into a conversation you and I were having, Leo. We were talking about at Bottle Rock, Matt and Kim, and people now using samplers, using yeah. all sorts of backing tracks. I mean, this yeah. definitely ties into that in terms yeah. of... It's a robotic band. A way to augment your live performance, essentially. It also reminds me... Uh, of the kind of the old school uh, robot uh, one-man bands and things you'd see at the uh, mm -hmm. Penny Arcades where they would play and th it was all robotic. I think it's kind of, it's, it's a wonderful maker uh, project. Now, we should point out you mm -hmm. have been uh, three weeks now on uh, Kickstarter with not a lot of interest, 19 backers, $2,000 towards your goal right. of $230,000. Well, yeah, and that's kind of my question. What's yeah. the two... Two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Why? Why a quarter million so dollars? The, I really wanted to push the envelope on this and do it right. Hardware is difficult, as you guys know. Um, so.
to get the appropriate amount uh, to pay for the molds for injection molding and bring the costs down, which is, uh, I think there's not a whole lot of people out there that probably want this at the price point we can offer it at Kickstarter. So I wanted to start out strong, see if there's demand, first of all, if there's a market, and also try to uh, bring the cost down by getting injection molded parts. Um, if we were to meet that goal, I would see that there was both a market for it and I could have a cost lower and maybe take it to the next step. So it was important to get to the next step. Um, I would have preferred to start smaller, but realistically, I, the math didn't add up. So. It's, good, it's good you're realistic. I mean, I think that's important. Um, the other uh, piece that I wanted to emphasize is I'm also, I, I think this is fully functional. It's great. If people want it for the function, this is the time. If they want it for the sexy, that's next, <laughs> right? And this would work on pretty much any guitar or? Oh, yeah, that question. It can work on electric guitar and, and uh, acoustic with a standard neck size. Um, mm -hmm. We do have some flexibility in the, the width of the neck, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't fit on a classical guitar, for example. Shall we vote? I am going to give you $10 just for the pick, the, the pen, <laughs> and the brochure. It's not something, as you can see, that I would ever, ever have any use for because I have no musical ability at all. But Ian and Anna are so <laughs> cute. I just, uh, not when you make that face, though, Ian. Don't, don't make that. Just my suggestion. I'm going to say I'll fund it. Really? Yeah. Wow. You want to go amazed. next or you want me to go? No, I'll, I'll go ahead and go next. Okay. Um, I think you need to narrow your focus and mm -hmm. who your market is. I think the price is a little too high. Mm -hmm. I mean, quite a bit too high, substantially okay. too high. Um, I don't really care if it's sexy, but mm -hmm. I, I just, I had to keep going, who's this for? Why are you right. doing this? I had to, too many questions. And, and bottom line is based on the price, based on how much you're needing to raise to make this happen, I'd say go fund yourself. Yeah. You're such an evil person. Yeah. <laughs> Ian and Anna here. They're adorable. They're, they're, they're adorable. It's, it's their father you're talking I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're I, a sucker. I, there, there are a couple of things about this that are very compelling. One is the uh, helping people who are impaired in some way to mm. play music, which is very important and, and it's okay. a beautiful thing. The other one is the maker aspect and the, the you know, you're right in, you're right there with what's happening mm -hmm. in the, in technology with the 3D printing and the maker thing mm -hmm. and rope, you know, using robotics to, to make art essentially. Mm -hmm. Uh, those are two awesome things. Um, but unfortunately I'm, I, I actually think that what would be much more compelling and I'm not even sure that that would be compelling enough, would be a guitar that has it built in somehow, mm. as opposed to a thing that clamps on. Uh, I'm going to say go fund yourself, um, mo mostly be for the same reasons Lisa did. The, the difference between the market that I can imagine, and mm -hmm. it could be a failure of my own imagination, mm -hmm. but the market I can imagine versus the amount you're raising, mm -hmm. those are very, you know, if you were if you're going to raise that much money and you were going to have the next iPhone, Mm -hmm. That's one thing, but you're gonna you, this. I, I don't see this ever being a huge mass market thing. I don't think you necessarily intend for it to be. I just, I just have trouble uh, putting those two things together. So I didn't think when I came in today that I would be sitting next to two such grouchy people. Excuse me, <laughs> grouchy people. We're not grouchy. You didn't let's know see, we were going to be on the show. Let's, let's, see the, the, let's see what the chat room has to say. Well, good news for Leo. Uh, Fifty-eight to forty-two percent. Charum says I'd fund that. You're kidding! Oh. The crowd says thumbs up. See, Anna and Ian, you were right to have him as your father. Awesome. Thumbs up. <laughs> the tiebreaker uh, needs to be somebody off on the side. Robotar, guitar chord robot. It's on Kickstarter. Yeah. You've only got seven days to mm. go. I hope we can help you uh, get some. I tell you what, it's, it's a great maker project. And mm -hmm. I do. in all seriousness, I think a lot of people would very much love to get the plans for this. And they should go there and, uh, and you can... Uh, I agree. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. Nice yeah. job. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wow. Grumpy people. <laughs> Not grumpy. I'm just a realist. I, I, I don't think cute kids is the criteria, Leo. <laughs> that doesn't, I, yeah. I need... I, I, I have a controversial split decision in there. What do you think of... Uh, how do you think it went? Uh, exciting. I'm glad the uh, crowd came through for me. It was great. You know, people definitely seem to be very split on it. Uh, what, what are your plans? I know you're... A, bit of a lofty goal with this initial Kickstarter raise. Do you have sort of a plan B if you don't hit that amount? I do. It's a, It was a bit of a Hail and Mary. We wanted to make sure that there was a market for it. I think the market is focused and uh, we're going to regroup and see if we can target that very focused market rather than the broader market next. So you got half your entourage here. I assume the other half is trashing the dressing room as we speak. Uh, any advice for future contestants on the show? 
Uh, come, show up, have fun, take uh, the great advice. I think we got some good advice, and um, it's going to be, I've already got, I looked on my phone on the way out, and I already have a new backer, so come check it out. So that wraps it up for our second episode of I'd Fund That. If you have a product you'd like to submit for consideration on the show, send an email to I'd Fund That at twit.tv, and we'll see you next time right back here on I'd Fund That. <laughs>